that was doable back then. We're in 2020 right now. It's not doable, okay? So Toronto, doable back then. I could, I could have held it and <clears throat> Mortgage will be very, very small, minor in a way that I'm not gonna have a lot of expense. Uh, we looked at Milton. Milton was expensive. Milton's probably about half an hour, 40 minutes away from the downtown core. Um, and then we looked at Milton. Milton was a little bit more expensive. It didn't have multifamily. We had Hamilton at that time as well, just a year after, and we lost a shitload of money, uh, about 500K. I lost that money. I pay back my investors, you guys know the whole story. But Hamilton has a good market now, it's very strong. So London's a very good market, very strong market. Um, don't, don't sidestep London. Toronto, KWC, Hamilton, London, those are what I hit at the very get-go. And then now we're doing St. Catharines, Vaughan, and Whippy. The best cities to invest in Canada. That's what we're gonna be talking about today with Casey Wong, but Casey's actually gonna share the perspective as well as the cities he's actively investing in or has invested in the past. I know you guys are constantly wanting to hear about the markets that I invest in. It's all in London right now, so it's, it's kind of a short conversation. So we brought Casey on the YouTube channel so that he could share the different markets he either is investing in or has invested in the past, and we just share our perspective about those markets and what you need to do and understand as an aspiring real estate investor before jumping into a new real estate market. But let's jump in to today's video. What is up YouTube? Matt McKeever here again with Casey Wong and in today's video we're going to be talking about the cities that Casey has invested in and kind of why he invested in them and what cities he's actively investing in today in 2020. Yeah. So way back, this is Toronto. We started back in 2003. Toronto was a very viable business or, or location that we can do, you know, invest in the triplex, right? The duplex, triplex, that's what I was looking for. Something that's affordable. In 2003, we bought that triplex downtown Toronto, uh, Dundas and Broadview for 197,500. So Toronto was doable back then in 2003. So I'm just gonna write these dates here. This is a triplex, a threeplex. That was doable back then. We're in 2020 right now. It's not doable, okay? So Toronto, doable back then. I could, I could have held it and <clears throat> Mortgage will be very, very small, minor in a way that I'm not gonna have a lot of expense. Uh, and I'll cash flow nicely. However, we went into the other markets like Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge. So we held that till a 20, uh, 2009, I believe. And then we divested, uh, sorry, it was a 20, um, we held it for about over 10 years. So 2003, so uh, 2014 or 15 or something. Uh, yeah, 2013 or 2014 is the one we sold. So we held it for about over 10 years. Kitchener Waterloo Cambridge, we bought this because it was very affordable. We looked close to Toronto. So when we were driving, uh, we looked at Milton. Milton was expensive. Milton's probably about half an hour, 40 minutes away from the downtown core. Um, and then we looked at Milton. Milton's a little bit more expensive. It didn't have multifamily. So we hit the 10 plex in, in Kitchener. It was doable, it was $430,000. So I'm gonna be dating, these numbers don't make sense now because you don't see a 10 unit for 430,000. But Kitchener Waterloo Cambridge, they, they built a lot of multifamily, so it was doable. So when we bought that in 2004, that was a 10 plex. Now, it was doable and it was great. Great cash flow, very, very, very stable, good market. It was right beside the courthouse, downtown Kitchener on Chapel Street. Um, then we hit Hamilton. We, had, we hit Hamilton at that time as well, just a year after, and we lost a shitload of money, uh, about 500K. So I'm gonna put here 500K loss. I lost that money. I pay back my investors, you guys know the whole story. But Hamilton, um, three, uh, three buildings, and eight, two eight plexes and 12 plex on 821 Main Street, 827 Main, and 959 Main Street. There's a Connaught Fish and Chips right across the street, but that was Hamilton back then when I bought in 2004, and then in 2005, I divested. I lost a lot of money there. But Hamilton has a good market now. It's very strong, so I'm not gonna be saying that Hamilton, I'm the only one that lost money in Hamilton. I'll say that again. Uh, a lot of you people are investing in Hamilton. Hamilton's actually a very, very strong market, so don't, don't bypass Hamilton. You can make a lot of good money there in Hamilton. I just hit that, and I, I lost and I never went back because my other areas were, were sort of growing. So this is no particular order. So Toronto, then the KWC, and then I hit London as well. This is a couple student housing in the one in Atlanta Sarnia area. Bought it real cheap. Uh, but 
you have to understand that not all strategies will work in those specific areas. If you have, if you can do a triplex in downtown Toronto, I know some people that are doing it in, in downtown Toronto and making good money doing it and you're doing it properly and making a, a, a like a single family home into a triplex, great, do it. If your numbers make sense that you can actually manage it and you don't have to go to London or you don't have to say go to St. Catharines, do it, do it in Toronto. If you can, if you can make the numbers work because I know the rents in Toronto are very high. I just didn't look back in Toronto because I'd rather buy the 30 to 40 unit buildings. London right now, in our specific holdings, we have that 36 unit building on 89 Rideout. So that was a buy, basically quickly flip it, but the market had a downturn because they had a stress test and London's market um, sort of slowed down. I think it's gonna start picking up now. We're 2020 in February now. Hopefully that starts to pick up and then we're able to divest that holding so I can build my house. Um, I'm actually, we're actually building our house right now. So London's a very good market, very strong market. Um, don't, don't sidestep London because London, two hours away, they have a very strong um, company, there's companies moving in, a lot of growth in London. And then you'll see adjacent areas like the Sarnias, like the Corey McKinnon who's doing Sarnia. Uh, other areas will feel that ripple effect. You're gonna feel that, oh my goodness, London's expensive, they're gonna move out. Okay, so you'll see those other areas uh, building up and building, the prices will start to inch up. St. Catharines are in this right now with To Be Arlington. St. Catharines, again, a very strong market. Uh, a lot of growth in this Niagara region, Welland. Uh, again, they're not building any like buildings like this, and a lot of this market, the buildings, are, it's getting tight. So that means prices to buy a building is getting higher. The rents are starting to inch up. So St. Catharines, more multifamily. Uh, Barry, you're not gonna see a lot of multifamilies there. Okay, to tell you the truth, it's, it's usually single family homes. So a lot of people doing, let's say the Midland, the Barry area. I know uh, Manny Brennan lives in Midland, but that area is very strong for single family homes. Maybe the rent owns, maybe the duplex conversions, the small multifamilies, let's say the six, eight, 10 plex. Maybe you can find a 10 plex there. But Barry's going to be a very uh, single family home oriented type of market. Buy it, hold it, you're not gonna cash flow a lot. Single family homes don't really cash flow a lot, but there's a strategy there as well. So again, I have one single family home in Barry. Uh, it's a, uh, I, I mentioned that before, it's in Letitia Heights in a rougher neighborhood. It's a town home and I bought it for about 125,000, way back in 2003 or four ish. Okay, Hamilton again, a lot of multifamily. But take a look at your different markets. Your Hamilton, I mentioned that before, your property tax is gonna be high, Orangeville is high, but St. Catharines is high as well now. So you, I, can, I don't mind being in markets where the property tax is a little bit high, but there's gonna be different strategies. You're gonna buy a multifamily with that purchase price being fairly low. Mm -hmm. I know Matt's doing multifamily in London as well. Once you stabilize a multifamily in this specific areas, like your Hamiltons, your St. Catharines, your KWC, your Londons, those are gonna be your quote unquote cash cow. Mm -hmm. They're gonna, you don't wanna sell those. You're gonna hold that. I know you're working on a 13 unit building, I think, or 31 unit building in London. Once you stabilize a building after two years, once you get your property manager in there and you do things properly and you have that just natural progression of that rent just rising, you're gonna hold those. You're gonna hold those for at least five years and after 10, five to 10 years, you're gonna do very, very well, okay? So again, multifamily in different locations will have their strategies, okay? Vaughn, we're actually just north of Toronto, we have Vaughn. We actually secured a build, like a piece of land there that we can build uh, quite a bit of units, okay? We, we actually secured it just only like three, four weeks ago. But in Vaughn, we can build, I believe it's about two or maybe 300 units. And oh, wow. Yeah, so it's gonna be substantial. We're gonna partner up with uh, uh, my builder that does affordable housing. Likewise in St. Catharines as well. So St. Catharines and Vaughn, we're gonna be building. We're building in Whippy as well. So these are something that we're going into something that we've never done before, okay? Doing a complete new build, the government incentive is there, so we're taking, we're going back to the 1960s and 70s where they did affordable yeah. housing. So it's a strategy is there. It may not be the conversions from your 10 plex or your triplex to affordable housing, but these are gonna be new builds. The, the government, if you take a look at um, CMHC, they have a new build and they have, it's a 50 year, um, amortization, it's going to be a 1.5% interest rate and it's gonna be for people that can build affordable housing. It's a percentage of the number of units um, that's going to be pegged for affordable housing. So if I'm doing St. Catharines here, if I can do a 73 units, I believe it's somewhere about 12 or 15 units or I just don't remember the numbers. Um, 
that's affordable housing. So these are going to be for your, uh, your, your mothers and your kids uh, in, in a uh, violent situation that I would like to help. And it's going to be for uh, your seniors because they need affordable housing too. Because when they get older, like I have my grandmother getting a little bit older, they can't do the stairs or they can't do um, going to the washroom. They need wider uh, sinks, cabinetry or uh, doorways, things like that. So at least like if we can do this for these uh, these groups, the government incentive is there for us as business owners, as landlords, to be able to build and build for the long term. And then we have to actually keep the rents there, which is fine because I have that, I have those rates and I have that mortgage pegged at a lower rate, so that offsets my lower income, right? So again, St. Catharines and Vaughan, well, that's what we're doing. We'd like to get get into the affordable housing, and it's a good, um, uh, it's a good strategy. Okay, it's good for the community and it's a good business uh, uh, venture that we can do with our investors and it makes sense. It makes sense for, for now the government to incentivize our like, business owners to build, to help these people out, okay? Uh, Whippy, we're still doing that build in downtown Whippy. So in the Durham region, so you have uh, Oshawa, um, uh, Oshawa, Whippy, and there's another city. Pickering, or? Pickering, yes, uh, an Ajax type of all that in the Durham region. Um, it's a great location where um, it's affordable. Okay, and so Whippy, we're just doing a uh, we're doing a condominium, and we're going to be building, and it's just going to be a quick sale, just like the London, but London sort of turned on us, and then that 89 ride out. So, but that too is going to be um, a, a sale as well. So that 89 ride out, and then Whippy, we're just going to sell as well. Sometimes the market will change what you're doing. Okay, and what make sense as, as a business, as something that's viable, right? Because it comes to a point where it's like, hey, we can't, we, we can't be you know, uh, uh, giving money away. If I'm, I'm not making money on these, there's no point in doing it, right? So it has to be viable, like financially. So again, going back, no particular order. This is just how I started and then I sort of got, I just threw some <laughs> these cities up. So basically Toronto, KWC, Hamilton, London, those are what I hit at the very get-go. And then now we're doing St. Catharines, Vaughan, and Whippy. What's up guys, Matt here. Have you ever wanted to do wholesaling? Have you ever wanted to go all in on real estate investing? Well, I've heard your demands from the comment section on my YouTube video, and we're looking to hire more people to join our team. Now, this is going to be a unique opportunity. It definitely, you're going to need to fit outside of the traditional mold, but if you're willing to go all in on real estate investing, learn everything and do everything necessary to become a successful wholesaler, and you're willing to move to London, Ontario, and move into one of the mansions with me, well, let's do it. So we've got a process for you guys to be able to join our team of wholesalers. Right now, I have seven full-time wholesalers working for me in southwestern Ontario, but we actually want to grow the team even more, a lot more in fact. But the requirements are you need to be willing to go all in. So no other jobs, no side hustles, no other personal commitments. You just need to be laser-like focused on real estate and learning and personal development because that's what this mansion's all about. In addition, you need to be willing to move to London, Ontario. I don't care where you currently live, but you need to be willing to move to London, Ontario. You need to be eligible to work in Ontario, all that good stuff. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. We're just looking for really dedicated, really hungry individuals that want to join our team. If you want to apply, send us an email, clickwholesaling at gmail.com. You're probably going to spell click wrong, so we're throwing it up here on the screen. We'll also have a link in the video description down below. But this is a once in a lifetime opportunity guys you've seen the evolution of Adam Martin from my team over the years he joined us back in 2018 and he knew nothing about real estate investing he'd never made an offer never bought real estate never made a dollar off of real estate and today he's absolutely crushing it I know there's a lot of people that aspire to be the next Adam Martin as well you've seen the evolution of Mike and Shakir from my team and how they've grown as individuals and wholesalers as well in fact we even got a whole new crop of wholesalers that you really haven't seen yet on the YouTube channel, but they'll be coming soon to a video on your newsfeed. But beyond that, we need more wholesalers. This is really a once in a lifetime opportunity. If you're serious about going all in on wholesaling real estate, I need you to join my team. Click the link down below, send us an email, and I look forward to chatting. So again, going back, no particular order. This is just how I started and then I sort of got, I just threw some <laughs> these cities up. So basically Toronto, KWC, Hamilton, London, those are what I hit at the very get-go. And then now we're doing St. Catharines, Vaughan, and Whippy. There's always 
there's always changes. So you actually, again, I said you pivot, right? So your business is going to pivot. It's going to change. You just have to be open to those changes. Once you've done one, it's not hard to do another. Um, if you're doing a build, like the, the Whippy, the St. Catharines, and the Vaughn, once I get going on that for the affordable housing, once I know that part of the business, it becomes very uh, uh, repeatable, okay? So again, get, get into that stage where, get in, just get, get your first property, okay? Yeah. Once you have that first property, you know how it is. The first one's the hardest. Once you get going, then it actually becomes a lot easier. Then you can show your investors what, what your, your history is, because they wanna see history. They want to be able to, um, invest in something that you have done, you have experience in. They don't want to throw money at you and say, oh, go, go try it out, uh, son or um, a nephew or niece or anything like that. Go try, but go, go gamble away and, and invest in you, but you have never done it before. So my take on anything like this is that if you're looking for investors, show a little bit of history. If you don't have that history, work with somebody. Work with people that, you know, that are, become that property manager. Become that, because you have time, you have more time than more, and less money. So you have more time, you're going to volunteer your time. You can do that property management. You're going to become that paralegal or whatever. Now you can go out there and show your experience. And now people will start to invest in you because now you have that, you don't have to own all these. Okay, you can partner up with people and say that I'll take a 10% stake in it, or maybe I'll just take a fee, right? But once you have that experience, once yeah. you show people, those investors will start to come because now their money is, is, uh, is not risky for them. They're always looking for uh, non-risky, high return investments. It sounds weird, but it, it is, because it's a high return than average, but less risk because now you have that experience. So they're gonna put that money and invest in you and invest back into our community, okay? We are landlords, we are business owners. I'm not investing in the, in the, the Nikkei, in the Japanese market, or um, in the FTSE, in the, in the London market. I'm not investing overseas somewhere, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but I'm investing here, back in our community, and you want to, again, show experience. Show that you know how to do it. Show that you know how to go to the court. Know, show them that you know how to renovate a unit. Like, this is one of our units that we renovated. Uh, show them exactly that you're doing it properly. You're not over-renovating it, you're not under-renovating it, and you're doing the regular R&Ms, the repairs and maintenance on a regular basis with these tenants, right? You're gonna have those bad, quote unquote, feedbacks that I've had, okay? Mm -hmm. That I go through that you overcome. They wanna see that, okay? But some investors said, oh my goodness, three cents, right? And they're actually happy because I'm on the newspaper, not them, mm -hmm. right? Yep. I'm, I'm watching three cents. Even three cents, I'm watching it, okay? Because they wanna see who's accountable, who's actually doing yeah. that work. They, they appreciate, hey, Matt is, and his group of people, his, his team, He's investing in a 31 unit building. He knows how to run a business, how to manage staff, uh, go to the tribunal, things like that. But he can oversee it. But it's not a blind investment, okay? Yeah. So we're not, he's not, your investor's not dumping money into something that, that you have no experience in, okay? That you're willing to take, take that bad rep and you're willing to do, you know, go in front of the newspaper, in front of the in front of the uh, CH uh, news, and say that you know what, um, I'm well, I take responsibility for the three cents. Okay, mm -hmm. not my staff. Those are they're following my directions. Okay, yeah. so my investors understand that. Hey, the steps that we take, that I have to I have to be able to defend myself. That even on three cents, that people like literally like landlords. Like when I go to these meetings, people say, "Hey, oh, three cents, three cents," right? Like. I don't even know why 50 cent is called 50 cent. Maybe he went after people for 50 yeah. cent. You know what I'm talking about, the rapper? But maybe people will walk, or walk down the street and say, yo, three cent, <laughs> Chinese guy. But hey, you have to take responsibility for your actions. You have to know how to quote unquote defend yourself, okay? Know that you're not doing anything wrong, mm -hmm. that everything you do, um, could have some consequences yeah. to your actions, okay? As business owners and as landlords, okay? So we, as a, this community of landlords, let's do things properly, do things the right way. We follow code, we follow these directions, the end force from the government, and we have to explain our situation. Trust me, you're gonna pivot from the Toronto to the KWC's London, say, these are, you're gonna do what, your list will be different mm -hmm. from mine and Matt's, okay? We all have our different specialties. I can have my property management as my specialty because I like doing this. 
Uh, Matt is great at providing content, providing information. He's like the master of this, right? Again, he's the Oprah, okay? He comes in here, he explains the situation of how to invest, how to teach, how to educate people, okay? Um, in real estate, go with what you're good at, okay? Yeah. You don't necessarily, you can outsource a bad part. Listen, I'm not, very, I'm not a very good administrator. I outsource that real quick, real quick. I will outsource my accounting to my wife, okay? Or she outsources it to another person. She likes to do strategy and strategic planning for the, for, for the business. But you can always do find something in this type of business, in this real estate business that you're good at. When you're good at something, stick with it. Hone that skill. Make it the best ever, okay? Matt's the best ever in Canadian real estate. He's gonna be the best ever. He's gonna, he's gonna educate people, and he's a go-to person, okay? I may be very good at just multifamily, and maybe doing some building, and you'll find knowledge, and you'll find my knowledge uh, insightful, and you'll take some of that away, okay? But I'm just a specialist in that, all right? Again, if you're good at selling and buying homes, right, you're an agent. Be the best at your, your skills, your skill set. You, you don't have to be generalist anymore. We're not in high school that you have to take yeah. every subject. You're in basically past university because you specialized in accounting. I specialize in finance and investments. We only specialize in what we're good at now, okay? So find what you're good at, find your niche market, pivot many times, you will pivot, okay? But keep on honing that skill to be the best at that specific area that you're gonna be good at. Yeah, I love it, that's amazing advice. And I think it's something that we really need to internalize. You know, double down on your strengths. Way too often we want to become jack of all trades, but it keeps us back from becoming a master of one. If you really want to excel as a real estate investor, focus on, focus on a niche, focus on a segment of the business and become an absolute killer, become the best in that segment, and that's really gonna allow you to propel yourself to success. So, kind of talking about these cities, Casey, We've got a lot of viewers from the GTA, so I'm sure they're very confident in the market of Toronto, but as, say, like someone that was born and raised in the GTA, how did you get comfortable moving outside to other cities? Like, What sort of data or research or sort of fundamentals are you looking for as an investor in, you know, say, a Kitchener or London or St. Catharines? We're looking at growth. We're looking at GDP growth and we're looking at company growth. So when we looked at KWC, even London, University Town, um, now recently St. Catharines, we're looking at companies moving in, okay? And I'm also looking at the bigger REITs, okay? So I like to see the cap REITs out there, the Starlights or the Skylines out there, and they're investing in these locations, the Homestead. Um, these are the location, and these are the areas that they did their research. Some people looked at, hey, I'm gonna buy a single family home near Starbucks or like a, a box store, like a Home Depot or things like that. Yeah. I don't know what people do, but some people do do that, okay? Which is smart. I'm looking at areas where there's growth, number one, there's jobs, okay? There's a migration, is it migration or people moving yeah. in to, uh, to a certain city, and that's what I'm looking for. If I'm looking for something that's very stable, doesn't have that growth there, um, I got picked on Ohio. Like, I, I, I think it's a very flat market. I, I'm guessing, I'm not, I don't know that market, but I'll just pick, let's say, D Detroit. Uh, maybe they're yeah. changing as well. Uh, it's a very flat market. The cap rate should be higher. Your capitalization rate needs that, basically that lift, because again, your, your, your price value, your, your value of the building is not gonna go up. It's not gonna appreciate a lot, so you have to have that. So all these areas have appreciation, okay, as number one, has job growth, okay, and a stable, if not growing population. You want to grow, so that's what I'm looking for. Capitalization, it's, it's, a, it's, a, vague, it's, a, it's a weird term. You don't even have to know how to calculate it. Just look at, are you making money at the end of the day? Because when you break it down, NOI, what does it really mean? Are you making a profit? And when you have that turnover, is that NOI going up? So you want that NOI to go up when that turnover occurs. Again, baseball cap, go in, go and take a look at other your competition. So you're gonna take a look at the building next door. What are they renting for? Mm -hmm. The cap REITs out there, the homesteads. Oh, there's a building right beside my, my building, a 40 unit building, there's a 100 or 200 unit building. Homestead is, is renting at 1300. I'm gonna be at 1250. Okay, yeah. just be slightly lower. That makes a big difference. As long as it's clean and renovated properly, you'll get those tenants, okay? And it's nothing wrong with putting a sign beside their sign. Because yeah. a tenant, once they walk into that location, that area, and they're, they're, viewing, they're, they're viewing that one bedroom that's 1300, they're gonna come view that 1250, that 1250 unit, okay? 
So capitalization rate is can you drive it up? Can you increase that NOI? And that will dictate like what we're buying in this location, excuse me, uh, St. Catharines, um, the KWC area, we're buying it at let's say a, a high fours. Okay, like a 4.7, 4.8, maybe a four, it could be up to as low as a, maybe a 4.3% capitalization rate. But we know that there's a lot of units that hasn't been renovated, okay? So it's different. When you're taking a look at a building that already has, it's a 4.3%, it's already um, completely, it's a turnkey, it's a 40 units that's already done, it's gonna be 4.3% forever, that yeah. capitalization rate, right? So you want that building that doesn't have uh, a lot of the renovated units that when you turn it over, that 4.3 is gonna probably give me 8.5, five years from now, mm -hmm. okay? If you can do it faster, great. You can have that turnover and then you can, put, you can, you can push that rent up. Cause that's, to be honest with you, that's the name of this game, yep. right? It's, there's no secrets, there's no secret, people call it a secret sauce or secret mm -hmm. this. There's no secrets behind anything what we do, okay? I love the fact that when, when this is what I said is that, um, your 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 execution is a hard part. Yes. Okay. Your execution is hard. Your knowledge and all of this. There's no secret to it. It's all open. Okay. Yeah. Doing it is a hard part. Yeah. In my opinion, and I think a lot of experienced real estate investors will agree with me. Real estate's simple, but not easy. So the the concepts are very simple to understand, but the execution, putting in the consistent work, losing multiple bidding wars, but still going back at it and making that next offer. That's the hard part. And like. Casey was saying, as far as like looking at the fundamentals behind any of these cities, all this information is available for free. So if you're not sure what the vacancy rate is for a given city like London, all you need to do is type into Google London CMHC vacancy rates and boom, you immediately have amazing data on it. Same with if we're looking for something like net migration, we can just type in the name of the city, Stats Canada migration and again, boom, you've got just the most amazing research at your disposal, but you need to put in the little bit of work necessary to actually study those things, to read up, you know, go to the city of London's website or Kitchener's website and read up on who their biggest employers are, what the biggest, you know, festivals are, what the biggest tourism draws are. Those are all, you know, basic fundamentals that Casey or myself look at before moving into a new market. Yeah. Actually, my wife does that all the time when we put in a, uh, um, basically a binder for, for our investors is that she does all of that. She puts in a nice little binder. The investors want to see that. So you yourself as a real estate investor, you're gonna, you've seen my little pamphlet, the, the, the handouts that I provide. It's not for me, it's for my wife. She does all that, the net migration, um, the population growth, uh, the, the companies involved like in the, in the city. So she does all that. Uh, I can explain my, like I'm, I'm very focused on what I do. Mine is really building specific. Right, mm -hmm. uh, and how to run this business. Uh, she's bigger picture, strategy, where, what, does, what does the investors need, uh, quarterly updates, um, uh, return and things like that. So we, we're very specific and strategic in our own rights, but you have to know if you're selling, let's say St. Catharines or London, you better know your market because your investor is gonna be asking you, why this, why that? Uh, I don't understand this. Uh, what do you mean the economic development is, is uh, this, this personnel or this person is saying this? Explain to me. You have to know those questions beforehand and you have to be able to uh, give the feedback or negative feedback and you have to point it out first. I want you guys to, that, that's what we always do. We point things out. The three cents, I'm gonna point that out first. Okay, I'm gonna tell my investors that I'm on the news for this, right? Um, this, uh, this building has this problem, okay? Um, We've scoped the lines and it's bellying at the, at the whatever part of the building and I'm gonna have to rip it out, but we got a cash back on clothes at $200,000 or, or, or whatever for, for this and it's only gonna cost me 150,000, but it's 50,000 into it because there could be contingency. You always, you point the finger, you highlight the bad parts first of this investment, okay? Don't let your investors point it out. You be the three cents. Yeah. Okay, you let them you let them know what what they're up for. Amazing advice. Thanks, Casey. Thanks again to Casey for taking the time to break down for us some of his favorite real estate markets in Canada. If you guys want to watch more Casey Wong, check out this playlist right here. Or if you want a different Casey Wong, check out this playlist right here. And again, until next time, remember, making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money in this world for us to all make it. But if you don't smash the like button, me and Casey cry. Thanks, guys.